question of progress in economics, that's, that, that is a very, very uh, important and profound question, uh, which I think economists really should think about much more deeply. I, I suppose it's a bit like the, you know, how the Supreme Court defines pornography. Uh, it, you know, it's hard to define, but you'll recognize it if you ever see it. How to define progress in economics? Well, I think we should be um, dealing with the problems that people have and trying to get a systematic way to understand them. There is a precondition, is not to throw out the past progress <laughs> and not to consider that we have at each step to reevaluate past progress. Second condition is to better understand the world in which we live. I mean, if a theory um, <laughs> decrease my understanding of the world, I think it's, we are not doing progress. <laughs> If uh, the theory is telling me counterfactual, like uh, there is no such a thing as unemployment, I think we are uh, going backward and not forward. <laughs> if a theory tells me that uh, it's a problem that uh, China and India <laughs> are becoming richer, I think it's a backward theory. So, I need to understand the world in which we live and uh, everything which <laughs> participates to my understanding is a progress. We have made some progress because in the 1929 and the 1930s we had a collapse and there was insufficient uh, attempts to deal with that. Um, there were some attempts to deal with that which were actually may have even been gone in the right direction, but it was insufficient by, by a long shot. And now in this current crisis, we, came to, we really came to the brink, but um, just in the nick of time. I think by actually quite wise policies on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, we managed to avoid what could have been a really, really serious uh, crisis. Well, I think uh, in the end, uh, I would uh, define it in relation to our ability to understand the real world. I mean, of course, I mean, it's, I deliberately use the word understand rather than predict, yeah? mm -hmm. because that, uh, that uh, notion of uh, prediction that a lot of uh, economists use to define I mean, what uh, the purpose of economics is uh, very narrow. And uh, I mean, it is uh, that, uh, a useful part of our understanding of the world, but it's only one part. And I mean, therefore, uh, I think uh, the ultimate test of uh, progress uh, of economics that uh, has to do with uh, how we actually understand the world, how it is, how it develops, how it changes, how you, we can do things deliberately to change it or not. Yeah? In economics uh, discipline, I think it's to get a better understanding of things. I think, you know, uh, I think we always go, some people say we go by cycles. I hope we go by spirals at least. You see what I mean? We, we revisit things we've done before, but hopefully with new insights. In order to establish whether uh, economics is making sci scientific type of progress, you have to really know how you compare current economic theories with previous economic theories. You know, science has to progress by improvement, not merely by accretion. And I think the danger of what has happened in economics over the last 40 or 50 years is that progress has been defined simply as the increasing complication of economic theories, the increasing use of ever more potentially rigorous mathematics, but that has no relationship whatsoever to the success of the models used in explaining reality. Of course, you have to judge economics also by results. Uh, so if you can avoid more first order mistakes with uh, knowing more economics, that I think is a good thing. Uh, but sometimes economic goes in ways which, uh, you know, I think are not always very, you know, promising. Like, for example, uh, real a lot of the real business cycles, uh, I, think, I think, was wasted time. And I think I'm happy if now people move away from there and go more into uh, integrating macro and finance and, uh, uh, or trying to get to things which, you know, at least get, I think, you know, you can look at data, you have glasses 
to look at the world better and hopefully to avoid first order mistakes. If, if, if economics allows you to do those two things, I think then, yeah, then it's, a test of, uh, it's a test of improvement. How would you describe the criteria for progress in economics? Um, not to be so surprised as we've been for the past four years, when $500 billion of losses on subprime mortgages comes close to taking down the entire global economy into a near Great Depression. Um, that that was a point of vulnerability that very few people um, saw. Even Nouriel Roubini did not, who's been Dr. Doom for the past decade, did not think that the crisis would be caused by defaults on subprime mortgages. He thought it would be a dollar crisis. Um, so not to be blindsided in this unpleasant and unfortunate way. What is d distressing to me is how little uh, the original thought that is out there is actually penetrating to the core of the discourse. Uh, you, you have a great deal of work by people who are in a position to think clearly and to, and to, and to write well on these subjects. Um, but uh, I don't see uh, the transformation of the collective uh, uh, project that people call economics uh, progressing at all rapidly. I mean, in fact, I don't see it progressing at all. The criterion of progress should be how much closer are we getting to an empirical explanation of reality, number one. So there's an empirical test. And secondly, how much more realistic are the assumptions that we are building into models? So the idea that we can make progress by using simpler and less realistic assumptions, to me, is complete anathema. That is not progress, that is actually regression towards a more formalized, more abstracted, and uh, less useful form of economics, which is essentially, I think, what's been going on for much of the last 30 years.